On this episode of Searching for History, we visit the third of three forts that make up the harbor defenses at the mouth of the Columbia River. This time, we are visiting Fort Stevens. Fort Stevens is on the Oregon side of the Columbia River at the northwest corner of the state, about nine miles west of Astoria, Oregon. Fort Stevens was the largest and primary fort of the Triangle of Fire. In this video, we will visit various parts of the fort, including Battery Pratt, the West Battery, Battery Mischler, and Battery 245. Fort Stevens was built near the end of the American Civil War and was named after former Washington Territorial Governor and Civil War General Isaac Stevens. As seen in this information panel, Fort Stevens had over a 300 degree arc of fire from south and west towards the Pacific Ocean up to Fort Canby and Fort Columbia and east on the Columbia River just past Astoria, Oregon. We are now approaching Battery Pratt. Okay, see the track on the ceiling? I think they would they would move the yes. coordinates on this track. So that's the shell room, and this is the magazine, so the, the actual projectile was in there, and then the powder was in here. The magazine room. So what you see in there is the magazine room. This is a disappearing rifle in the lowered position, a replica of a disappearing rifle that would have been located in Battery Pratt. We are now approaching Battery West, which was a four-gun battery. Fort Stevens was the only military base in the lower 48 states to come under enemy fire during World War II. On the night of June 21, 1942, a Japanese submarine, I-25, surfaced off the coast of Fort Stevens and fired 17 shells from its deck gun. The shelling was ineffective and caused no damage. In order to not reveal the exact locations of the fort's guns, Fort Stevens did not return fire. So you 
have a, another observation building up there and it makes me wonder if there's a whole nother row of emplacements up on the top there yeah where there's because are. this is the observation for these two when looking at the aerial imagery it is obvious there are no gun batteries on the hill i can only conclude that the observation building is the main observation point for all of the batteries and it was placed in that location due to it being the highest elevation within the fort. We are now approaching Battery Mischler. Yeah, well, because the tunnel came oh. here, so this is all, everything below us is bunker. At yeah. the beginning of World War II, Battery Mischler's two gun emplacements were covered with timbers, earth, and sod to camouflage the battery. At that time, Battery Mischler became the Harbor Defense Command Post for controlling the defense of the mouth of the Columbia River. There's something running in here. <laughs> yeah, we can hear a, a motor running. Interesting. Soon after World War II, a concrete roof was built over the two gun emplacements, which is the concrete surface you walk on today. At the beginning of the Korean War, the Air Force built long range radar surveillance on the concrete roof of Battery Mischler. Battery Mischler was used by the Air Force for two years before the operation was moved to Nacelle, Washington in 1952. So behind me here is the original entrance to Battery 245. Wow, we're getting to where it's sandy right here. Oh, is this a gun? I think so. Eight out of the nine batteries at Fort Stevens were constructed between 1897 and 1904. The ninth artillery battery, Battery 245, was built in 1944. Battery 245 is one of three World War II artillery batteries built to create a triangle of fire to protect the entrance to the Columbia River. Battery 245 at Fort Stevens, Battery 246 at Fort Columbia, and Battery 247 at Fort Canby. The battery had two 6-inch guns, and between the guns was a reinforced concrete bunker housing control mechanisms, a power generator, plotting rooms, a radio room, shell magazines, a latrine, etc. The battery was also designed to be gas-proof in case of chemical attack. To the south of Battery 245, there is an interesting-looking bunker. This bunker has no gun emplacements, but there is a concrete trench, almost like a slit trench. This is pure speculation, but I wonder if this could be an anti-infantry bunker where men could pour out of the bunker and line up along the concrete wall. If this is the case, the bunker is in a perfect position to protect the left flank of the row of artillery batteries from a ground attack. Please leave a comment if you know the purpose of this bunker. Yeah, it's pitch black in there, but there's a motor running. The fort was active from 1863 to 1947 and is now an Oregon State Park. 
Let's take a quick look inside the fort's steam plant. General Electric Motor. Looks like these may have been spots where other motors were mounted. At least these two. The landward side of the fort has a large field with a dozen or more concrete foundations. Each foundation has an adjacent chimney. Apparently the wooden structure is missing. We are curious exactly what is going on. I have a feeling this was housing or barracks. We couldn't find any information explaining the nature of these foundations. They are very strange because you would think if there was wood above the concrete foundations. You don't see any way a board would have been secured to the concrete. There are no bolts or anything sticking up. Also, there is no walkway between the sections. This feature gives the impression of a latrine with a trough running down to a drain. And then the chimney. It is not attached to the structure. What was going on here? It is very difficult to understand. If anyone has any idea how this worked, let us know. Please leave a comment. These two cannons here are 10 inch Rodman smoothbore cannons. These are replicas of the coastal defense cannons that would have been at the fort in 1867 to the 1890s. The fort was first constructed from 1863 to 64 as an earthwork battery, which you can see here. It was officially named Fort Stevens in 1865. So this is the end of our journey around Fort Stevens. It's quite a bit larger of a fort complex than Fort Canby and Fort Columbia on the Washington side. But it's, uh, it's quite interesting. There's a lot to see here. Yeah, it's beautiful and would be great to take kids to. Yeah, there's all kinds of places for kids to run around. It's a unique history, an early history of Oregon settlement and Pacific Northwest settlement. Basically from the 1860s onward, there's been some sort of presence around here of a military fort. So that's the end of this episode. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.